the in the last tutorial we looked at the structure in the basement and now we're looking at the structure of the second floor and we'll think a little bit about what's going on right here we have all of these floor joists that are coming across and the wall here is carrying the load of this end of the floor joist and the wall here is carrying the end of the load of these floor joists but what about these they're sitting right here really right now just on a simple bond and the question is well what holds this end up because this is really acting as a beam and what holds this end up so we have to put some structure in there again and I could put columns in here um, but that's going to be in the way of the this one might work all right with a column but what about this one let's put the column in and see what happens so I'm going to go over to structure and then to column we'll use that same pipe column and we'll put it in right here and then let's take a look at the section that looks through there so this section will take a look at what we did it will make more sense to me and it might make more sense to you so here's the column it uh it's taller than it needs to be and it needs to go down farther but i don't think i'm going to use this but i just want to see where does that actually fall on the first floor plan will it be in the way so there's that column there's my garage door if i pull my car in boom i have a real issue there i could put a column over here but that's the easier side which makes it really simple um, to to use uh, let's see here so if we look over here that's not going to work i could put it over here that might work because no one's going to pull their car in that far probably but it's possible um, it's it would be in the way nonetheless so that was choice one i'm going to delete that because that's not going to work so let's go back to the second floor structure now and what i'm going to do is i'm going to cantilever a beam out here to pick up the loads of this end so i'm going to go over to uh, insert i'm going to load a family mm, imperial library we're looking for structural framing here we go i'm going to see if i can make it out of wood assuming that we could uh imperial library structural framing so you have a lot of my stuff in there i want uh, dimensional lumber so let's see if we can find that real dimensional lumber i renamed it but let's see what happens nope cancel that insert load a family I'm looking for dimensional lumber. So these are all custom made um, uh, lumber with different ends on them. Clipping dimensional lumber. Let's see what's here. Nope. Dimensional lumber. Nope. Dimensional lumber. No. Dimensional lumber. Dimensional lumber. Dimensional lumber. And a lot of here we go what's this right here that looks pretty good there's my dimensional lumber so i'm going to take a uh four by twelve uh and i'll change that to a six by twelve since i don't see any six by twelves there but i'll take the four by twelve say okay and then uh architecture no structure beam let's see what we have here looking for my don't see it okay so let's go back and do it again insert load a family dimensional lumber this one looks like a good one ah four by 16 okay let's take that i think it loaded it into him into my 
4 by 16, there it is. Um, I might use the 4 by 12 because I see it there now. So 4 by 12. And I'm simply going to put it here and here. And I haven't paid any attention to the height of it. So let's go over to this section and see where it actually went in. Um, should be right around here. And it, look at that, it fit right exactly where I wanted it to be in the elevation wise, but I want it to line up right there. Okay, but I said I was gonna change it to a six by 12. So edit the type, duplicate. Um, so we'll make this six by 12. Get rid of the two. All right, and so a four by 12 is three and a half. So a six by 12 will be five and a half inches. Okay, that looks good to me. So we change that to six by 12. Now I have to move it over and then align it because it's bigger now. Whoops, I want to align it this way. And hmm. oh, there it is. All right, so I want to align it right here and here. Okay, so there it is. And let's go back to the second floor plan now. It doesn't need to go that far. Uh, let's take it to right there. Generally, the rule of thumb is whatever your cantilever is of your structural member, you have to go back um, two to three times as far. So this is clearly more than the best. So this is the point where the loads are going to be supported. This side is going to be pushed down and this side is going to be try to be pulled up. So we'll have to secure this side to hold it down. And this can in this side the gravity will naturally force that to go down. OK, so I have that beam in there. So that'll carry this end of uh, that, but let's take that same, see this is the, this is where it gets difficult because I have to span this way as well. Although I could maybe stick another one in here. Uh, it could be the header for the garage door and it could be cantilevered over there to carry that in. So let's do that and see what happens. I'm gonna copy this guy over to here and maybe down to here a little bit and let's go look at that section and I can see that it's right here and I want to put it on top of this this wall um, I could put it below but then it would stick out I want to put it in the floor so first of all I'm going to have to edit my boundary of my structural framing. So I'm looking for my structural second floor. We'll go to that view. And I just want to maybe pull this back to here. So that's the beginning of my framing. So look what happened. It just moved that in. Now I'll take this guy and I will align it over here. And so my framing's starts that looks like it's a little more than it should be in spacing so let's put the let's take this guy and just drag him all the way across the top of the wall here so we have an opening over the garage door it's going to need a header and we have this guy over here we'll bring him back let's see if we can drag this guy back a little bit and then I'm going to copy that again and rotate it 90 degrees. And now we'll just align it here so that we'll have another beam across here. And so now I know I want this guy to go a little farther. So I'll just drag him right to there. Whoops, I went too far. Pull him back. And I'm going to grab this guy and just drag him all the way over to right there. And this guy, we'll gra I'll grab him and drag him all the way back to here. And this guy doesn't need to go any farther than the end of there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's save it. So now I have a, I have a beam cantilevering across here, which carries this load. I have a beam all the way in that wall, which carries 
this load, the end of this load. So all of these guys, half of the loads coming over here, being distributed to this bond and then to this beam here, which then carries all the loads over to this point and to this point. And this beam picks up those loads there. This beam picks up those loads there. Let's go to our 3D view. And we'll look at it in a diagonal view. And I'm gonna take this guy and just pull him up a little bit. Let's see. It's still working. And uh, yep, you can see my beams right there. So this beam cantilevers across this wall. This beam cantilevers across this wall. And then this beam and this beam would be attached together. These would be attached here. These would be attached here with some sort of heavy duty hangers. So the load, half of the load of these floor joists are carried by this wall. The other half of these load of these floor joists are carried by this beam, which is transferring those loads over to the end of this beam and to the end of this beam. And it's all inside of the uh, floor joist area. So I like that. And uh, this is getting a little maybe more complex than I would require of you in the, uh, in the class. And we'll have much more simple framing. Probably for your houses, that's, it's a possibility. But anyway, uh, it's, it's many of the students that want to do a, a caliber work in this class will definitely pay attention to this video and actually try to be realistic in the distribution of the loads. This is a Revit class. We're trying to learn the, uh, uh, learn how to execute the various commands in Revit and how to use it. Uh, so, but there might be something in this tutorial that would help you loading more structural elements or placing certain structural elements and paying attention to their heights or extending or, uh, or you know, uh, the opposite of extend uh, the different beam elements here. So somehow that just the, method that I used might be beneficial to you in the class, although the actual structural analysis uh, may or may not be uh, of, all, of all that much interest to you in, in this class and in, in your model.